So, as I was saying, um, when we're doing our budget, we do want to think about our goals, what the goals are from here moving forward. For some of you, it may be retirement. For some of you, it may be finding a house. Um, it might be that you're still working on clearing up that debt. It may be for some of you, um, other things like vacations and stuff. And when we think about SMART goals, we do want them to be specific. So know what we want. When do we think that we can attain it by? So measurable. I want to go on vacation for a holiday season. I want to buy a house by 2022. Or I'm thinking of my retirement age in 2030 or 2040, whatever it may be. Is it attainable? We want our goals to be attainable. And there is another acronym that goes with SMART goals, and it's called SMARTER goals. And with me, the attainable thing is to break down the long-term goals into those shorter, smaller, bite-sized bits so that I can see progress getting towards the longer-term ones. They need to be realistic. Obviously, I'm not going to buy a Lamborghini working for a nonprofit. I'm going to buy something that's two years old or older if I'm looking at a vehicle. And it's going to be timely. It's going to be something that we can track. We can figure out if it is working and know where we want to go. And when we do this, we do want to write it down in black and white. Having our budget, our goals, tracking our money in black and white, not only makes it real, a lot of people think of the abstract and keep shifting their mind on what their life's going to be when they don't write it down, but it also gives you a point to start tracking what you're doing and start seeing that these things are attainable. So it may be that you just do a checklist on different pieces of that longer term goal, like doing your budget, like making sure you're tracking your money, using proper bank accounts and tools that allow you to move closer to your budget. It may be resources and things like that as well. It may be that you do Excel spreadsheets um, for your budget or maybe finding out your net worth and keeping track of that. And I'll get into that one a little bit more near the end. But in the course of doing our budgets, the experts say that 35% of your budget should be going to housing. That would be your mortgage or rent, your taxes, home improvements, insurance, utilities, the whole nine yard of your household expenses. Here in New England, that can be difficult to do. So in that case, we would have to adjust in our budget to lower something else to make up for that disproportionate part. Um, it may be that our transportation isn't 20% of our budget. It could be 15 or it could be the investing in savings goes down to make up for the housing needs. Um, or maybe that we're not carrying any debt anymore, which would be a wonderful thing. Um, all of these things have relevance. Like I said, the screen that you're seeing right now, this is what the experts say we should gear towards. It's not necessarily relevant or um, obtainable for each and every one of us. Um, I am going to flop screens or flop slides, because I do want to talk about tracking again. When we are working on our finances, we are the CEO of our own corporation. And understanding where our money goes to is one of the most important things that we can do for ourselves. Making those choices that are right, that are moving us in the right direction of where we want to go. 
So, um, like I told you in the very first class, one of the things that I started doing was tracking my expenses. And I pick different ones to look at closely every time I redo my budget. So when I first started working for ACCC, I was going to Dunkin' Donuts for a cup of coffee and a bagel pretty much every single morning. And I found out $3.50 a day at that time um, equaled out to $911 a year. And that was a little bit too much to me for what I was getting. So I switched out how I brought it into my life. And I get my coffee and bagels at Market Basket. And I take it with me where I go. That saves me $700 a year that I can put into my emergency fund, use to pay down debt, and or put away for the long-term type things. Like I said, having those goals in mind helps you determine where that excess money is going to go. Another time that I was doing a micro track was on my cell phone bill. I shopped around and I told my cell phone company what other people were offering me if I switched over to them. Well, my cell phone company came up with a lower price so I was able to save some money there. So it can be big things, but it also can be the little things too that we switch up how we bring them into our lifestyle that can make a difference in that budget and make a difference in the savings that we're doing towards those goals. All right. It's not just a diet. I don't think diets work. It's a change of philosophy on how we spend our money. Once we've tracked our money a little bit, then we can look at the different budgets. And you guys will be receiving a full budget workbook after this class. Um, the budget in the workbook is not this one. It is a much more detailed budget. Um, it's one that I like much better than this, but this one will give you an idea. There are other places that you can get budget workbooks from and or download and apps that you can use for budgeting. But like I said, having it in black and white is going to be important for us. And we have to take into consideration the income that's coming in and all of our expenses. Hopefully the bottom line at the end of the budget budget is excess money that we can put into the investments and savings area. And we're going to talk a little bit about savings today um, and different types, because I always tell people, use a working savings account attached to your budget. So this is different than your long-term savings. Um, you might have some CDs and different things earmarked for different goals in your life. But this one is just to balance off that budget so that we're not stealing from Peter to pay Paul in any single month during the course of the year so that we have a freer flow. And we can make our money work for us a little bit harder, especially in these times that we're starting to see an uptick in inflation. And with the uptick in inflation, you're probably going to see interest rates go up. And that includes your savings account. So that's the offset. So if we budget properly, we're going to make our money grow for us a little bit more and have it there when we need it. So what I always tell people to do, again, and I said this in the very first class I did with you all, is gather up all the cash that comes into the palm of your hand, not pre-tax, but after taxes over the course of the year. If you get paid weekly, there are 52 weeks in a year. Some months you get more than others. February, sometimes there's only three weeks. So we want to make sure that we're flattening out the entire year's worth of money over 12 months. So we're going to divide it by 12. And any month that we make excess of that, 
it goes into that working savings account so that when we need it, it's there, number one. Number two, it is earning some interest for us while we're waiting to use it. Number three, it's insured. I don't care if you have the Golden Goose homeowners policy, it does not cover cash. And number four, it helps as a deterrent to what the advertisers do to us, which is get us to impulse buy. If you don't have the cash in your pocket, a lot of people run to their debit cards. I want you to try and avoid the debit cards as much as possible. But I want you to also think about what you're spending before you spend it. Having the money going into the savings account makes you have to think about it before you do it to know if it's something proper for you. Okay, so I do believe in paying for things in cash rather than using your debit card, especially when you're trying to teach yourself to budget. Okay, and always if you're using credit, you want to pay it off in full at the end of the month, if at all possible. Know your budget beforehand before you dip into that credit to make sure that you can pay it down as quick as possible if it's something that you need to carry a balance with. We're going to do the same thing on the other side of the budget on the expense side. We have three main types of expenses. The first one being your fixed expenses. Those would be things like your mortgage, your rent, car payments, personal loans, student loans, things that do not change unless you change them. They're very quick to put in to the budget, nice and easy, right across the board. It's not going to change until either it's paid in full or, like I said, you decide to change it by moving or whatever. The next thing that we put into our budget is we think about those periodic things. Car insurance is one of them. Christmas is another. You know, we want to get to the point where we're saving up for things and paying for things up front and or, again, if we're going to use those credit cards, use them for the perks, points, frequent flyer miles, cash back bonuses, and pay them off in full at the end of the month when you get your statement every time you use them so that you are not paying any interest. You're actually gaining from the credit card companies. The people that do this, as long as they keep their usage under 30% of what's available to them, are in a win-win scenario. So give you a few different examples of what I'm talking about. When I'm talking about paying things prior to them being due or having the money up front to pay for them, I'm thinking about things like car insurance, winter heat, things like that. Your car insurance, if you look at your statements, if you pay it in full when you get your car insurance, they give you a 10 or a 15% discount. If you are one of those people that pay on a monthly basis, you put a down payment down and you pay a certain amount a month each month until it's paid in full, usually taking nine months to do. They charge you an extra $5 to be on that payment plan. So if I can work my budget so that I'm paying for my car insurance in full, I'm saving myself not just the $45 in monthly fees, but I'm also getting a discount for paying it in full up front. So that can save me an awful lot of money. If I'm thinking about using my credit cards properly, whether it's Christmas or like I said, I for my clothes shopping, I'm the same way. You know, it's having those perks on that credit card. I'm using clothes for one of them um, just so that you get an idea of what I'm talking about. So I tend to shop at Kohl's. I use a Kohl's credit card. I put my money away on a monthly basis towards my goal or my budget for clothing for the year, which for me, it's only about $200 a year. I'm making interest while I'm saving up to make my purchase. I shop clear and sell and sale items only. 
so I save more money. I know how much I can spend, so I don't exceed that. But I also use the credit card because the perk on that one is an extra 15, 20, 30% off of my purchase as long as I use the card. Then I pay it off in full as soon as the statement comes in because I watched the capacity of what I could buy, made sure it matched, so I had the money to pay it in full, and I got all the perks, and I didn't pay the credit card a dime of interest. That's how to make your money work for you, and some of this is planning. And for everything I do, I plan for it before I do it. I budget for repairs on my house. When I think about the repairs that I need to do, well, first year that I moved in, my realtor or the inspector told me, yeah, the hot water heater is getting a little bit old. So, bing, check mark, that was the first on my list for things that I was going to need to do. Putting money away each month, I figured a budget of $1,200 a year works for me. So when I was calling around, believe it or not, everybody was giving me a price of $1,100 or $1,200 for hot water heaters. I saved up the money. That fall, I called around to all my friends to ask them if we knew anybody that was a plumber. One of my friends had a friend that was an acquaintance of mine, and he said that if he did it during working hours, it would be twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300. If I would let him do it at his leisure, uh, he would do the job for nine. So obviously, I let him do it at his leisure. Before the win next winter hit, I had the new hot water heater. I had paid for it out of money that I had budgeted for it, so I had the cash to pay for it, and I saved myself in two different ways. I wasn't using a credit card paying interest on it, carrying balances, and I got a discount for the work that was done. So thinking about SMART goals being even smarter, by making those plans before we do it, it helps us. And that leads to the last area of the budget, which are the variable expenses. Variable expenses are your food, your clothes, heat and electricity. These are the places that we can find the deepest discounts. And that's what I always push for. When I was younger, my mother, which I have to say I was raised in Framingham, but my mom taught me to be frugal. And she even gave me a book that I told the library about last week or last month um, called The Frugal Shopper. And in it were a lot of different tips for saving money, finding different places, looking for um, flea markets and looking for discount shops, um, how to shop in a store. And it was an eye-opening book, so I highly recommend it to anybody that is looking for ways to save money on what they're doing instead of putting themselves on a diet. And like I said, diets don't work. When you start cutting things out of your life, um, you tend to splurge later on, and we don't want to do that. We want to make a new lifestyle for ourselves where we have a feeling of abundance and we're able to save and put money away towards more goals, okay? So when I talk about budgeting for heat, yeah, you could get on one of those budget plans with your a utility company, but when you do that, again, it's gonna cost you a little bit more money, and the money that they are putting away for you, in actuality, they're making the interest on it instead of you. So the way I look at things like heat, there are five months to winter, on average, through New England. I take my highest winter heating bill and multiply it by five and divide it by 12. Spring, summer, and fall, while my heat is shut off, 
I am putting that amount of money away into my savings account, earning more interest for me while I'm waiting to use it. And that money is there when the winter heat bills come in for next year. Another little thing that I did, which I always do, and I never thought of it this way, but somebody pointed it out to me today, is I do have a wood burning stove and I stocked up wood this year at the end of season. Somebody pointed out to me today that the price of wood has gone skyrocket over the last month. I am very happy that I stockpiled it nice and early because that means I have the wood to burn for next winter and I also save myself a lot of money. So sometimes it might be the timing of the things that we do. Now, I said I was going to talk to you about resources and banking a little bit today because I think that once we get on a path to looking at life as a CEO of our own corporation, that corporation's us, the budget is part of us and part of the corporation, we also have to think about different ways to track it, different ways to show growth, different ways to look at finding those savings so that we can shift our money into those goals that are going to make us money. Um, real estate being one of them, if you are not a homeowner, there's a lot of different ways into real estate um, that can bring the cost down for you. And I highly recommend a course through CHAPA, C-H-A-P-A dot org, which is a first time home buyer class where you learn soup to nuts about the entire process before you do it. You'll also learn about things like lotteries which are deed restricted properties that are sold at less the market rate. On the other end of owning that property, yes, you do need to sell it to another lottery person, but um, it will be deed restricted, so it can't be sold at market rate, but you still will make some earnings and equity on the back end because unfortunately the cost of everything does go up. And that money can be used towards your next home and or be part of your retirement program. Um, but not only are there lotteries that you'll learn about, but you'll learn about a lot of mortgage products that actually have down payment assistance attached to them and towns that do down payment assistance. So it might be a way to go. For the budgeting workbooks, we have things like what's on our website, the book that you're going to be getting after this class. Um, you also have other tracker things like Intuit's Mint Budget app or Pocket Guard. Um, FDIC Money Smart online courses are another way to learn more in depth about money um, and also to share those things with your children. Um, but there's a lot of different guides out there and ways to think about it. But staying focused on planning before you doing is the number one key to unlock the potential. Another thing inside the workbook that you're gonna be getting is also a sheet that you can set up on a spreadsheet in your Excel. And I've used this tool for years and life happens to us all, nobody's immune to it. But when life has happened to me, I have been able to track it and watch my prog progress in correcting those things. So um, the tool is a net worth spreadsheet. And I'm not going to pull it up from my workbook for right now. But what happens is you start categorizing your savings, what's in your checking, maybe cash on hand or any other types of money that you have and then you track underneath it the bills that you have not your regular budgeting bills but any debt so how much your house you know on the mortgage or car loan or credit cards or things like that and you total up 
the assets, you total up the expenses, and hopefully each month you're going to see the assets grow and the expenses go down. Okay, that is building net worth. When you do have a big expense that you need to tackle, say you have a house and you need a new roof, write it down at the bottom of your worksheet. That way you know that you spent your money on something that was important or you might be spending it on a goal type of thing. But by knowing that, you understand why maybe the amount of income went down and the expenses went up for a short period of time. And then you start working towards improving it. Another thing that I always suggest is when somebody is working on a life event, whether it's debt, whether it's a medical thing, whether it's a car repair, whether it's a home repair, if you don't have enough money to pay it off in full, if you are working for a business that offers you a 401k and you've been maximizing your retirement, slow it down a little bit until the debt is paid off and then bring it back up to full score. We want to make sure that you do have an emergency fund in savings that hopefully will take care of the debt issues on those things that pop up on us. But if you lose a job or if you um, have a major event happen, that emergency fund needs to be six months to a year's worth of income at this point. And not too many people have that amount stashed away in liquid assets. So that is the first spot on looking at things for um, investing that I would look towards building up that emergency fund. And that could be savings. It could be money market funds. It could be CDs, anything that you can get at easily with little or no penalty. Your IRAs, your 401ks, all those different type of long-term investments, we don't want to have to dig into if we don't have to. We also want to make sure, like I said, if you need to slow down something, you're not stopping your investing. Um, when I first started working here, I was paying off some medical debt. And I was only putting in 1% of my income into my 401k because that's all I could afford to do. And that was pushing it. But at least I was putting something away. After I paid down that debt, I increased what I was contributing if a life event should happen to me again, first place I go to is that emergency fund that I put away in my local credit union. Credit unions tend to pay better interest rates. The second thing I would do is lower the amount that I would be contributing towards my retirement, not stopping it, not pulling money out from it to take care of what was needed while I rebuild my resources. So those are the steps I always tell people to take. Um, when we look at banks to work with, if you're first starting off or you're, if you've just been digging yourself out of debt, I really recommend credit unions to people as my first choice. Local banks secondly, and then the big banks for those people that do have the funds and are good at managing their money. Reason being, a local credit union does tend to pay better interest rates. They're called dividends because actually you are part of the board of directors once you join as a member of a credit union. There are lower no fees. They're usually connected to other credit unions. And they, like I said, they give you better interest rates. But also on the side of credit, the interest rates are much lower than the bigger banks, and they're capped by federal law at a default rate of 18%. Local banks, once chartered in Massachusetts, go by my Mass State law, 
and the cap is 21%. Most of the local banks belong to the SUM network. So you could use anybody else's ATM and they'll pay for a certain amount of transactions. So you're not paying fees. Uh, most of their products are low or no fees. On the side of credit, they're capped at an interest rate of 21% as a default rate. Um, so usually, and if I give you an average of a person at a 720 credit score, you're going to open up a credit card at a credit union somewhere around 7.99-ish. At a 720 for a local bank, it might be um, 10 to 13%. At a bigger bank, it could be there or above, depending on where that bank is chartered and the type of bank that you're going to. So especially for people that are just starting off or recovering from a life event, I tend to push them towards the credit union. I have accounts with each. Um, the bigger banks, you have to be more careful to make sure that you're on time, pay it off in full, and also make sure that you carry um, better balances with checking and savings so that you don't wind up with fees for those. Um, the local banks, also you're going to get better interest rates the more money you have in the bank, especially with money market accounts. So we're not just using our budget to think about taking care of debts that we've had in the past. We're using it as a new philosophy, new way of thinking about dealing with our money. We want to plan. We want to use the best choices for us. And only you will know those choices for you. I can give you suggestions based on what you tell me your goals are. And I am always open to doing that. And um, you can also talk to a counselor at my organization if you have issues with budgeting and with debt. Um, ACC is a nonprofit financial education agency. Um, we try and empower people through debt management, credit counseling, housing counseling, bankruptcy counseling, student loan counseling, and we're starting to work with businesses as well. 